Hi everyone and welcome to a rather belated Brea Fest unboxings video. Now I say this is Brea Fest but it has got a few other things that just sort of arrived in the same week as my Brea Fest stuff did so I've decided to throw that in the video as well. Every time a parcel arrived I filmed a little bit about it so I'm going to include that to begin with and then do a rundown of all the models afterwards with some close-ups and a few of my final thoughts. The first model to arrive was Nicholas, who is the celebration model for this year's Brea Fest and is also a new mould for Brea. Okay, so here he is in hand. He's got really nice like gold, um, like an undercoat uh, that really just shines. When he hits the light like that, that's just stunning this uh one of the reasons i've kept my bandera model the decorator i wear for so long is because he has this gold sort of undertone and uh, i just i love it um it's so sort of realistic for bay horses um to have this kind of chroming so that's just awesome like a lot of other people's mine did come with quite a few flaws so i am just hanging on to him for the time being and i'd like to get a nicer condition one later on so that i could customize this one or i might just keep him as like a keepsake kind of thing so let's just put him to one side and move on to the next box that was delivered I purchased the models in this box towards the end of July and they are from the online store that we all struggle to pronounce, the, yeah, that one. These are the limited edition Vicenzo models produced by Wea. They come in two colour variations and there are a thousand made of each of them. I bought two of the blue variations because I wanted to use one in my giveaway on Instagram. My initial reaction was that they were bigger than I'd expected. I don't own the original version so I'm not sure if they actually are. I'd actually forgotten but each of them come with their own stand just in case they're tippy and I thought that was great for them to throw in. Just looking at these guys through the packaging I already really like them. They're full of details and one thing that I've noticed is that their tag isn't actually stuck down to their leg which if you're like me and you remove those tags is a really big help. Finally, the Brea Fest box arrives, so I'm really nervous while I was opening this box because it contained the Gambler's Choice special run for this year and also the Renish Draft, which of course was a matte or glossy split, and I was really hoping for the glossy one. Next year, if Brea do a Gambler's Choice again, I definitely won't be buying it this time. I kind of felt a bit silly, actually, as soon as I had paid for it because knowing that the special runs didn't retail for what I was buying them for anyway and having that huge risk of possibly getting something that I don't like or don't collect was just quite stressful for me for a while um, but anyway the box is open so let's get into it and see what I ended up with. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed we get something great. What is this? Random online special run, ooh, okay. I really can't tell who this is. <laughs> I feel like it's such a long time from Brea Fest I've actually forgotten what the special ones are. Oh, it looks like it's Rapunzel. Yes, oh my gosh. I hadn't really kind of thought about her. Um, oh, wow. She's gorgeous. That is much better than the bears. <laughs> I was so expecting getting the bears. Um, but yeah, I've got her. She's lovely. On to the next package, and I'm expecting this to be my Runish Draft, who I had not planned on getting. I'd actually told myself categorically I was not going to get him. But then they went ahead and released the information that he was a matte glossy split. And if you've seen my Instagram account, you would know I really like the glossy models. I got... He looks glossy! No way! <laughs> got the glossy one. Ah! 
With all the uncertainty around those last two models, this next one I was most certain I was going to like. Okay, so here he is. I'm not going to completely take him out of the box because I'm not 100% set on him now that I've seen him. Um, this is a model I've always really liked, sort of seeing pictures and things of, but now that I'm seeing him in person, I'm not as keen as I was. Um, I was very excited to have like a bay hunter type horse, but I don't know, it's just not, something's not sitting right with me. Um, I did end up selling Chablis in the end. I probably could have grown to like him and I might get him again one day, but right now I don't have the space to kind of hold on to models that I don't really, really like, so he Okay, to we go. are back again because we got some more boxes. Yes, we do, Skycat. You're helping. Are you helping? So this guy might be old news to you guys in the US, but for us in the UK, he is finally here. This is, of course, Adamek. I put down the deposit option on him back in February, I believe, and it's now August and he's finally in hand. So I'm really excited to actually get my hands on him and get him out of this box. I absolutely adore this mold and now that I have the holographic Uffington it is time to start the conga so I am still on the lookout for the original Uffington and I'm hoping to get alternate at some point. Also from the Pony Club store we have a model that I bought on a little bit of a whim. While I was putting down my final payment on Adamek I just came across her in the shop and I needed to have her. I saw a lot of vintage Sablemate molds at Summer Willow Live and they definitely piqued my interest. This is of course Guinevere from the 2019 Sablemates Club. She's a glossy Palomino Arabian and I'm really happy to have her in my collection. I think she's super cute and I can't wait to get her on the shelf. Also coming home with me from Brea Fest was this paint and play model, of course on the Sablemate mould that I conga. And I also got some stickers from last year's Brea Fest. I collect the Brea Fest notebooks now, so of course I had to buy this year's one. And I also got the canvas tote that has Theo on one side and the Icelandic horse on the other. I also found out that the model on the bag is true to scale in terms of the real life model, so that was quite interesting. That's it for the unboxing, so let's get on to everyone's close-ups. Starting with Nicholas, there's not much else left to say about him really. I absolutely adore this mould and I can't wait to see what other colours Freya releases on him. As he stands, I absolutely love the metallic in him and I think he has such a sweet expression and just, yep, yeah, 10 out of 10, love the celebration horse for this year. He is quite badly flawed, one of the worst things being that he is very, very tippy, which I think is why he fell off the shelf a couple of weeks ago. Although a lot of his flaws are a bit tongue-in-cheek, I do find it quite funny that the spot on his leg fell down onto his hoof at some point during the process of making him, and I think that's just a little fun quirk that a lot of them have got. Overall, I'm quite happy with him. Of course, he was free with the ticket, so there's not too much to complain about in the space of his flaws and everything. If you're wondering about it, the head collar is made by Apple Mead Stables. She picked the colour herself and made the head collar specifically for Nicholas and I'm really really happy with it, it was such an awesome gift to receive. If you're looking for anyone to make head collars for your models I definitely recommend her, her prices are really great as well as her quality of work is just incredible. So yeah, definitely go and check her out either on YouTube or Instagram. The Renish Draft was my biggest success from Brea Fest I think this year. I was really on the fence about getting him and he was already for sale in my head because I was sure that I couldn't get the glossy one. He's also the first model I have on this mould so you always have that kind of apprehension that you might not like him even if he is the glossy one. Even if I had pulled the matte version of this model I still think I would have really really liked him. His shading all round is just really really good and even the masking around his mane is pretty good for some that I've seen. I'm quite happy that I got such a nice one. He has brown eyes that are actually more of a gold colour and I think that's just perfect. 
The only thing that I'm not 100% sure about is this stripe down the back of his tail. It is more of a stripe than kind of blended colour, but I can see past that. He does have a few other flaws on his offside where the gloss is kind of messed up a little bit, but I'm still just really happy with him. At first he was the model I was most uncertain about and probably most likely to sell on but having him in hand and also pulling the glossy version I'm really really happy with him and he's actually the model I like most from this entire haul video. For my Gambler's Choice special run I got Rapunzel and although I would have been happy to get any of them I was really hoping for Brahms to add towards my Big Ben Conga. Rapunzel is my first model on this mould and I absolutely adore her. She is a gorgeous strawberry roan with metallics in her mane and tail. She really has the sweetest face and expression and I could see her being a great first pony for somebody or a lesson pony doing Gymkhana games. And maybe one day I'll come up with a performance setup for her. From what I can see she has no flaws which I'm really happy about. Her shading is really great and overall she's just a completely stunning model. I love that she has metallics in her mane and tail. She has almost this gold colour and pearlescent running through them. I can't wait to see what Brea do with this mould in the future. Obviously there's the two variations, the short and the long mane. And I think there's going to be some really interesting models coming out on both versions of the mould. Guinevere is the next model and I'm super super happy with her. I found details every time I look at her that I didn't realise were there. Uh, she has dapples all throughout her body that my camera really struggles to pick up but they are there. The pearl colour in her mane and tail really shines under the gloss. And I've also noticed that she has some hoof stripes even though her hooves are tiny. I think she's just full of really great little details like that and I'm super happy to have her in my collection. Moving on to Adamek. Now of course I've seen lots of pictures of him online. Obviously he's been available in the US for quite a while now. But I think he's just a fantastic example of a really nice bay horse. He has mapping around the marking on his face and a little pink nose that's just super cute. He does come with a few flaws, unfortunately. There are a few areas like this on his leg, um, mainly on his offside though, so it's not a big problem. And also I've noticed that his neck here kind of looks funny and it's not something I've noticed on my Uffington, but it is quite hard to see details on him with his holographic coat. For a regular run though, I'm not disappointed. I will be trying to get him to some live shows in the future and possibly some photo shows in between. And I'm looking forward to getting him next to the holographic Uffington and getting some pictures with them. Here we have the blue and the pink together. They're um, really gorgeous actually. I can't see kind of... I was about to say I can't see any problems, but this one doesn't have an ear. Oh. Dang it, I wonder if it's in her little package. So I found her ear, his ear. There it is. So I've got to figure out a way to get that back on. I was a little bit disappointed with the broken ear, but I did manage to get it on with some super glue and baking soda. And I'm hoping that this kind of white line of baking soda does disappear over time. Aside from that though, with the price that these guys cost, I'm not really upset about it. I'm actually quite glad to have these guys in my collection. I love clearwear models and these are my first. And I'm going to be trying to track down the original model now, just so I can compare if they are the same size or not, because I'm sure these are slightly bigger, but they might not be. Even though these are clear wear and CTF models, I don't think they lack in any details and I'm actually really happy with them for the price that they were. I've had them for about a week now and I am using the stands that came with them because I've noticed with their weight that that front leg tends to bend outwards and the stands work really well in holding them up. So this is it, this is the group. I'm really happy with the models that I managed to get this year. 
Uh, Adamek is just a tick off of my Uffington list and also Nicholas, super happy to finally have him in hand. I've been looking forward to him since he was announced. The Clearwear models are really cute and just fun pieces to have. They add a real splash of colour to my Stablemate shelf. Rapunzel was a great surprise. I'm super happy I pulled her as well as the glossy Renish draft. And Guinevere was just a neat little cherry on the top. She's really cute and yeah, definitely a great glossy to have in my collection. You might notice that Shabli isn't here. I did end up selling him pretty quickly, uh, but he's gone to a great home with somebody who really loves the mold and also congas them. So I'm happy that he's gone to, you know, a, a good place. I definitely learned a lot of lessons from Rare Fest this year to take with me next year, including not going over my budget, not giving in to the gambler's choice, and also definitely getting any glossy matte split horses because I seem to have pretty good luck. But that is it for this video. I'm sorry it took me a bit longer than expected to get it out. I wasn't well, and you might be able to tell in some of the audio that my voice just isn't working right now. But let me know in the comments if you got all of the models that you wanted from this year did you go with the gambler's choice special run and if so who did you get thank you very much for watching this video and i look forward to talking to you in the next one